In the years after the Civil War, there was a huge boom in the urban population in the United States. And since people in the urban areas don't have the ability to grow their own food or raise their own livestock, uh, this increase in the urban population also led to an increase in the demand for beef, which you can see a lot of behind me. Uh, so, the demand for beef was in the cities, uh, but the supply was down in Texas. So there's this unique period in American history where uh, you have all of these cowboys that are going down to Texas, they're rounding up cattle and then driving them north to the rail lines that were running through Kansas and uh, Nebraska and other points through the Midwest so that the cattle could be shipped to the uh, stockyards in you know, Missouri, Chicago, places like that. Well, at the end of these cattle trails, you had these booming cow towns like Abilene and uh, Wichita, and probably the most famous and notorious of them all, Dodge City, which is where I happen to be today. Uh, so Dodge City had a reputation of being one of the most uh, crazy, wicked towns in all of the United States for a certain period of time. Uh, there were a lot of famous lawmen and outlaws that passed through Dodge City, uh, including Wyatt Earp, which is a personal favorite of mine because Tombstone is one of my favorite movies ever. I can quote the entire thing from beginning to end. Uh, let's see, Bat Masterson came through here. I think the James brothers also passed through Dodge City at one point. Just all kinds of interesting characters. So today, uh, we're going to go through and kind of look at what uh, is still in Dodge City. I think a lot of the original structures are, are pretty much gone, uh, but they have a, a museum called Boot Hill Museum that we're gonna look at this afternoon. It has a bunch of different artifacts in the original Boot Hill Cemetery. So, pretty excited about this. Uh, should be interesting. Uh, so this statue is called El Capitan, and it commemorates the Texas Longhorn. About four million head of these things were driven up to the uh, Santa Fe Railhead here in Dodge City. Pretty uh, iconic breed of cattle for the Old West. So this is historic Front Street. This is where all of the original buildings in the business district of Dodge City would have stood. So there would have been like saloons and trading establishments where buffalo hunters would come in and do business. Uh, there was a fire that burned down all the buildings, I think in the 1880s, and then they rebuilt it all in brick. But a lot of those old structures have been kind of recreated at the museum, which we're going to take a look at later on. Here's the old Santa Fe Depot. So the Santa Fe rail line would have ran right through here, and there was a law in Dodge City that you couldn't bring your guns north of the railroad, which is right there. And you can see here is the historic area of Front Street and making sure that that law is enforced is the man himself, Wyatt Earp, famous lawman of Dodge City, later became even more famous in Tombstone, Arizona, the famed gunfight at the OK Corral. He's one of my favorite historic figures of the Old West. Can you honestly have any statues in Dodge City and not have one for Doc Holliday? The man. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, even though Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday met down in Texas, uh, they, they really forged their friendship right here in Dodge City. And of course, Doc Holliday was part of the gunfight at the OK Corral later on in Tombstone. Um, kind of cool to be walking these streets where, where these guys walked. And gosh, I really just want to turn around and go home and watch Tombstone right now. Without a doubt, the most quotable movie of all time. And there's no argument on that. All right. And now we are at the famous Boot Hill and ready to go into the Boot Hill Museum.
Okay, so here's the old Fort Dodge Jail, which is quite a bit smaller than what I would have expected. Okay, so here's the inside of the jail. Kind of cool. And complete with sanitary facilities. Kind of an interesting story about this old uh, jail structure right here. Uh, apparently, this belonged to the Kansas Soldiers Home at one point, which was owned by the state. Uh, and whenever the Boot Hill Museum tried to purchase it, uh, they said that they couldn't sell it and they couldn't donate it because it was state property. But if it happened to be stolen, well, then they wouldn't press charges. Uh, so there was a group of men, uh, you can see on the picture right here, that literally came in with horses and tied ropes to this thing and drug it off. Kind of funny. All right, so here is the original famous Boot Hill Cemetery. And a lot of the markers have been burned up by prairie fires and everything over time, but they still have record of some of the people who were buried here, including an unknown kid who was hanged in 1876. I wonder what he did. Uh, so here's a thing for a guy named George Hoy, who was one of the few men that Wyatt Earp killed while he was a lawman here in Dodge City. Okay, so at first I didn't understand what these little stones sticking up were, but boots, get it. Okay, and as you can see, they still have space available at the Boot Hill Cemetery. Okay, so behind me is a full replica of what Front Street would have looked like uh, during the 1870s, 1880s uh, here in Dodge City. And uh, they've used it to uh, basically house a, a museum that has a lot of artifacts. So uh, being that Wyatt Earp and uh, Bat Masterson, some of those others, had their start here in Dodge City. I'm, I'm pretty pumped to go in here and take a look around because I'm sure that they're going to have some, some cool artifacts. Alright, so we're going into the Boot Hill Museum. And the lady that I bought the tickets from said that there's 25,000 artifacts here, including all these pipes. So, I think we've got a lot to see. <laughs> so, this thing is called Clean Clara. And I noticed that it said must be 18 years old to view, which I thought was a joke. Uh, but then I looked inside and yeah, you, you need to be 18 to view this. So this sign was encouraging and it did not disappoint. Guns, guns, guns. A bunch of old Winchesters here. And then a bunch of other Frontier firearms. Most of these are percussion cap and ball firearms. And then we get to the iconic buffalo guns. Pretty crazy. Ah, oh, so this is kind of neat. These are some guns that you might have carried if you were a gambler. Like uh, Doc Holliday or something. Pretty cool. Hey, speaking of Doc Holliday, here's a uh, double Derringer, like what he might have used. Robert Clay Allison. So this is a guy that came into Dodge City with the intent of killing Wyatt Earp and it didn't go so well for him. But this is his Colt Model 1878 revolver. Pretty cool. Yeah, so here we got some of the famous lawmen of Dodge City. Most prominent among them would be Bat Masterson. So this is a pistol that once belonged to Bat Masterson. Uh, he, he had a lot of pistols though that he bought and then kind of carved up and then he would sell off to, to make money. Uh, and then, of course, the man himself Wyatt Earp, who made a name for himself, uh, really in Tombstone is where he really became famous, but 
uh, was a lawman in Dodge City before going on to uh, Tombstone, Arizona. And that is the kind of weapon that he would have carried. Good grief, look at that thing. 12-inch barrel. Here's kind of an interesting display of handcuffs from the uh, 1800s and a little ball and chain to keep a prisoner from running away. But uh, the most interesting set of cuffs in here are these things called McKenzie mitts. They were invented in 1925 and are just cool as heck. Look at those things. And some thumb cuffs. It's a recreation of what an old drugstore would have looked like. Right, so here's a recreation of like an old saloon or gambling hall from Dodge City or from the Old West in general. Pretty cool. I'm going to refrain from quoting like one of a hundred different lines from the movie Tombstone. Right, pretty cool. Here's a document that was signed by Bat Masterson. And this is a complaint that was lodged by a prostitute that uh, was the result of some quarrel where she got called some pretty terrible names that I'm not going to repeat. cosmopolitan uh, so that was the boot hill museum in dodge city kind of cool um, it's kind of neat that they took the museum and basically reconstructed the original town uh, there's kind of a guide saying hey this is what this store would have been this is what this store would have been uh, pretty enjoyable uh, especially for somebody that is a fan of the movie tombstone like me uh, to get to see where doc holiday and wyatt earp kind of forged their friendship and other lawmen like Bat Masterson. Um, pretty neat experience. So if you're ever in Dodge City, uh, very cool place to go. What the heck? <laughs>